In our last video, we were talking about how in the chicken run, the uh, we're moving closer to winter and it's time to start thinking about how to update, upgrade their situation. Well, interestingly, the next couple days it got colder, 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 and now the ground is almost frozen. It's been in the mid-20s. We're supposed to get eight inches of snow tonight, and then next week it doesn't go above freezing. So we rushed through and got started on what I had alluded to in the last video. My good friend Eric is visiting for a few days, so he helped me a fair amount with this. And now, for those of you that were interested in seeing the start of this concept, um, this is it. This is phase one. And for detailed information on how we got it to this point, I'd encourage you to check out our videos on how we built uh, cattle panel high tunnels on this property. I go into much deeper detail there, um, so I'll link that. But what we have here is four cattle panels. These are $22 a pop, so we got just about $90 worth of cattle panels in an arch parallel to the coop. Now you can see I winterized the coop in a very low-tech way. I took milk crates, which we use extensively on this project now, and packed them with leaves as a windbreak, and then used actual full leaf bags and jammed them in. And so there's a little aperture. The chickens like to go under there to dust bathe, and, um, but now it's a little bit more sheltered as we come into this much more harsh, very fast, early, intense winter. And Eric and I tried to get this structured in a way where if we get eight inches of snow, we can still move on with it. Today I need to order some uh, greenhouse poly, which I'll order from the A.M. Leonard poly remnant sale. I'll put a link in the description. It's a great way to get off cuts of new greenhouse poly at uh, decent rates. I'm not affiliated with them, but I just, I like the option. And what we did here is measured off from the coop four feet and then measured enough space. There's still some modification. I'm going to pull these out and re-envision this area later. But we've tried to design it where a wheelbarrow can get through on this west side and also, more importantly, can come through on this side. So I'm going to move some of this stuff once we're there. So we still have flow and access. I have a tendency to box myself out from access, so I'm trying to avoid that this time. So there's four of these panels. They're knit together. We first uh, pounded in stakes, uh, black locust sharpened staves I made on a table saw. Pounded those in as deep as we could, moved them if we needed to to avoid roots, and then used 14 gauge wire to twist and bind the cattle panel to those posts that are hammered into the ground. So that gives it some structural stability from not wanting to lift up and move. And then to those posts, we cut and screwed on with heavy duty exterior grade star drive screws, more locust offcuts. Absolutely everything is imprecise, just using scraps, uh, but sturdy materials as possible and rot resistant because this is gonna undergo a whole lot of high heat, high moisture composting. Once we get the poly, we can stretch that over this and use these baseboards as um, a foundation to batten black locust battens onto. We'll show that in another video. And that'll keep it from lifting off. We want to design it in a way where come spring we can take all the poly off, dry it, fold it up, and store it for the summer, and leave this open because we don't want it to overheat in the summer months potentially build permanent raised beds on the west side to run a vining fruiting crop over the whole thing to shade the compost. But now we're trying to think through what the doorway in here will look like. That's phase two. And think about a flow access. We'll probably have one dominant walkway through the middle and then two large compost bays going up against the west side and the east side and figure out some sort of sacrificial poly or silage material that can go up against here to hold the compost from going against the nice high quality greenhouse poly. That's phase two. That'll be another video that we document, but I just thought folks might be interested in seeing before we skin this and frame it out the rest of the way, 
the very low-tech basic way to make some strong uh, structural arches to receive poly. You can see Eric's idea, which I think is a nice way to use less wiring material, is to use 14 gauge uh, metal and twist tie it around and bind it. And we'll go through and cover these over or hammer them in so there's no points that uh, us or the chickens can get hooked on. But that knits them together down the line. So far, so good. We'll do an update as we go. One thing I forgot to do before making this was I noticed there was a dead branch up in this pin oak, decent sized one, and I was gonna trim that out so that I could make this and not have to worry about bopping it, but I'll take it as an opportunity to test how strong these are. I'm gonna get on a ladder, cut that, and let it bounce off of here, and <laughs> we'll make an update on that, but I think this should be able to handle some dead branches landing on it. It's good to test that and just see. Anyway, that's phase one of our uh, covered compost generating run in the chicken yard that's also stacking function of acting as a windbreak for the coop and a very short commute for our birds to be able to work out here. Already it's getting cold enough that they're not too psyched on being out. So the urgency is there if we want to keep them productive and happy through the winter. So stick around or Stick with us for the next step where we get poly on this and then we'll document how we figure out a workflow through this space. Thanks for watching.